What's up guys and welcome back to the channel. So the video from me today, it's only going to be quite a short one, but it should be quite interesting. And instead of a review or a build or something like that, which you're used to seeing me do on the channel, I'm actually reaching out to you, the viewers for this one, um, more for your opinions and thoughts on a bit of an issue that I've come across. So sit back, relax, watch the video and let me know what you think. So for the last few days and probably weeks, I've been working on finishing off the last video for the AMD frame custom build system. You can see it's here and it's partially built. We've got the bits of the loop built up, but you'll notice that one side of the loop has been disassembled or it, there's parts missing from it. And the reason for that is because I came into the studio this morning to just finish off taking some B-roll shots and some photos of the finished system. And I noticed a bit of a issue and a bit of a problem with it. So uh, as you can probably see from the loop, the uh, coolant's looking a bit of a funny color. It was actually completely white when I bought the coolant. It's a solid white coolant. It's actually a coolant that I've not used before. It's this liquid cool CFX Ghost Y. I like the look of it. It's a solid white coolant. Uh, it was what I wanted for this system. Normally I would have used probably the EK Cryofuel uh, Cloud White, I think it's called, but the uh, shipping was a bit slow on that and I want something a bit quicker. This came quicker, but that's that's not really what we're, <laughs> what we're talking about. Anyway, the problem was the coolant this morning looked a different color. It turned from this brilliant white to more of like a duck egg blue, which I thought was a bit strange. I'd not seen that, especially how quickly this had happened. I mean, I'm talking maybe a day or so that the uh, coolant had changed from white to this blue color. Straight away when I saw that, I was thinking, well, maybe there's been some reaction that's gone on inside the loop. Uh, often when you get corrosion on copper, or brass, it can turn a bit of a light blue color. So I was thinking maybe there's been a reaction inside the loop. Um, I wasn't too worried about it initially. It was obviously going to be needed to be flushed out, changed and replaced with some new coolant. But then when I went to turn on the system, I noticed that both these flow meters weren't spinning at all, which was obviously strange because, you know, they're connected up to the pumps and they should be spinning up as soon as the pumps fire up. So I then noticed as well that the temperature of the CPU and GPU was rising quickly and I couldn't hear the pumps running. So the pumps had decided to stop running at the same time that the uh, coolant had changed blue, which instantly rung alarm bells. So I uh, drained the one of the loops down. So we've got two separate loops, one for the CPU, one from the GPU. Both pumps on the separate loops stopped working and the coolant had changed color. So I drained the CPU loop down, started to disassemble the pump. So I removed the uh, tube from the top of the pump. So that just screws out. And uh, just after I removed the tube, I noticed that there was some buildup on this seal here. You can't really see it that well probably on the video, but it has turned a bit of a, a bit of a brownish color. And I wouldn't normally expect that to happen as quickly as it did. Maybe after probably months or a year of running the system, you might get a bit of a buildup on that. So that again started the alarm bells ringing. And then when I actually got to this part of the pump, I could actually see down the hole here to the impeller and I just tried to move the impeller around with a screwdriver and it wouldn't budge at all. So the impeller had completely seized up. And, and again, I've seen this happen on systems that are you know years old and been running the same fluid for a long time. You often do get a build up down there to the impeller and it does stop the impeller moving. But this system had been built out of all brand new EK components, as you can see, and it had literally been filled up with this fluid for a couple of days and it had already blocked up the pump. So, well, something had blocked up the pump. So I disassembled the pump further and we then got to this part of the pump. So this is actually the D5 pump, the impellers on the top here, and this just kind of floats on a ceramic peg, which is like a, it's kind of like a floating bearing. Uh, the impeller just sits on there and then it spins around when the power to the pump is is supplied and that wasn't happening so that was just you know seized 
solid in position. So I did manage to de-seize it. And then when I looked inside the impeller, so I flipped it over, looked inside here, uh, there's some pictures coming up on the screen now, you'll be able to see, they're not very good, they're just taken on a phone. But you can quite clearly see there was a build-up inside the impeller on the bearing. And that build-up is what sees the impeller in position when power is applied to the pump. When you turn the system on, it was unable to spin up the uh, impeller and therefore, obviously, we couldn't see any liquid moving around on these flow meters. Um, so that's caused a bit of a problem for us because obviously we're now going to have to strip the whole system down, flush out these radiators, disassemble the CPU block and the same on the other side. I'll have to completely disassemble the other pump, probably disassemble the GPU block. You can have a look inside that and see if there's any deposits in there and flush the other radiator out as well. So it's caused a bit of a problem. Um, I'm not sure whether it's the coolant that's caused it or whether it's something in the system elsewhere or a reaction between the radiators and the coolant, but it's definitely caused me a bit of a problem. So uh, like I said at the beginning of the video, I just want to reach out to you guys and see if you've had an issue with this liquid cool CFX before or a similar issue to this that's happened very quickly with a different coolant. So let me know if you've had these problems before in the comment section and uh, because I'll be interested to hear what you guys think. So thanks for watching guys. I hope this video has been useful to you. If it has, then don't forget to give us a thumbs up, hit the subscribe button. If you enjoy the content from KitGuru and you want to support us, you can always head over to our store, pick up some merch. You can even subscribe to our Patreon. And as always, if you want to keep up with all the in-depth technical reviews, head over to our website. Mm -hmm.